This is King James Bible Study, lesson number 10, and we're going to be close to the end of your notes. It's going to be a capital F, the so-called archaic words. One of the arguments you'll hear about the King James Bible is it's got so many archaic words in it, the words that we don't use anymore. And uh, so we're going to see and check that out and uh, see if that is true. Now, if you'll take your Bible and look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'll show you an archaic word. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to get in just basically tonight's going to be clean up. We're just going to clean up some... Uh, end of this thing and put it all together. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we're looking at archaic words in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 25. 1 Corinthians 10, 25. Now what we'll do, we'll look at these words and we'll see if we can define them by looking at the context. And what I mean the context, uh, have you ever had somebody take something you said out of context? Well, when you read the Bible, you keep it in the context, and uh, nine times out of ten, if not always, you come across a hard word, or a word that we don't use anymore. Um, if you'll read in that area, you'll find the definition of that word. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Verse 25. We're sort of breaking into context, but we're just actually looking for um, the archaic word. Verse 25, whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience sake, uh, for the earth is the Lord's and the, and the fullness thereof. Notice uh, verse 25, the word shambles, all right? Shambles is a word that we don't use anymore. It's an archaic word, supposedly, and it's found in the King James Bible. Now, this is what they'll say. Well, we don't use that word, Shep, so we need a new translation to fix that word so everybody will be able to understand it. Okay. Now, watch what the Lord does when He inspires a Bible. Notice verse 25. Whatsoever is sold. Notice the word sold. And then after the word shambles, you have the word eat. Question. Where do you go and buy your food for your family? Marketplace, grocery store. Now, what is the word, what does the word shambles mean? A grocery store. Do we need a new translation just for that one word? Let me ask you a question. How many of you play tennis? I don't play tennis, but anybody play tennis? All right. How many of you know this terminology? Uh, the score is 15 love. Now, I have no idea what 15 love is. I don't play tennis. So, I'm going to um, go into tennis and I'm going to say, before I play, y'all are going to have to change the definition so I understand what y'all are talking about before I play. They're going to look at me and say, well, don't play. <laughs> we use this terminology for ever since tennis has been invented, and so if you want to play, you learn the terminology we use. Amen. If you don't want to learn the time of terminology, don't play. All right? How many golfers? I mean, I mean Apostle Paul is a golfer. Fought a good fight. I finished the course. <laughs> I mean, come on, people. <laughs> How many of you know what a par is? All right. How many know what a birdie is? Yeah. Birdie then you got an eagle. Yeah. Then you got a hole in one. Yeah. Now, I don't do. <laughs> I don't do many uh, pars. I don't do many birdies. I don't do many <laughs> eagles. But I know what they are because I play the game. If I didn't play the game, I wouldn't know the terminology. But they didn't change the terminology so I could play. I played. I had to learn the terminology they use. You have a King James Bible in your lap. You come across a word. You don't... Uh, all right, I've got another illustration for you before we move on to something else. 
Let's say someone wrote you, somebody that really cared about you, they wrote you a letter. Somebody cared a whole lot about you. Maybe a girlfriend or a, a wife. Maybe you're overseas and, and your wife sends you and you're in the military or vice versa. Your wife's in the military, whatever. They send you somebody, you got a letter here. And in that letter, they say a word or use a word, you don't know what it is. How many of you in this room take a pen, mark through that word, and put the definition out beside that word that you don't know what it is? In other words, if you you got somebody that cares about you. They use a word, you don't know what it is. What do you do? Look it up, find out what it means. You got somebody that wrote you a letter that really, really cares about you. How insulting would it be for you to come across a word you don't understand and go, <laughs> Now, we wouldn't do that to somebody that wrote a letter that we, but we do that to the Bible. And we say it's okay. Now, uh, let's look at something here. Um, I'm hoping that you can see that. I don't know those of you that are on the back. Here are some archaic words. Some of them I can't even pronounce. Um, evolutionist. Uh, you might want to split it. See, I just flip that switch right there. We'll just do one side. I think it'll be okay. Does that help any? Uh, these are all archaic words. All of them. Most of them I don't even know how to pronounce most of them. But, none of these words are found in the King James Bible. None of these archaic words are found in the King James Bible. Where are these words found? They're found in periodicals like Human Events, The Economists, Chronicles, National Review, Forbes, ASAP, The Weekly Standard, The New American, The Free Market, and Saturday Night. These periodicals is where these archaic words are found. They use them every day. My point is, these people that write these daily articles every day use these archaic words and they fuss about the archaic words in a King James Bible. <coughs> Somebody don't like that book. They use these every day and expect you to figure out what the meaning is. But when they come across an archaic word in the Bible, oh, we need a new translation. Better to understand. You see the hypocrisy there. Well, uh, let's look at uh, something else here. I've got some more. <clears throat> I've got some more archaic words here. Now, again, you may not be able to see those very well. Uh, I said, enjoined, engrafted, deride. Some of these uh, words, you know, we don't use anymore. We don't use those words per se. And uh, these words are found in the King James Bible. And you look at these words, thither, therewith, therefrom, thenceforth, the, swaddle, sunder, all these rudiments, all these words are in the King James Bible. They say, our critics would say, well, Brother Jeffrey, we need a new translation. We don't use these words anymore. Um, we need a new translation. That's why we need a New American Standard or an NIV or whatever, whatever. Well, not only are these words found in 75 different archaic words found in the King James Bible, they're also found in all of these periodicals down on the bottom. They're used every day. Now, you probably can't see them, uh, the 21st uh, Century Science and Technology, um, American Heritage, American History Illustrated, the Chicago, uh, Chicago Tribune, um, the um, Something Herald, uh, Journal of Democracy, 
da 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 here we go. A whole list of things. Now here, here's my point. They fuss about these words, archaic words being in the King James Bible, but these periodicals and news sources use these same words every day. There you go. Um, and it is true. Here to four. <laughs> right. So there you go. Now, here's, here's a good one. Arcade work. You know what they say when we were talking about, we always say, they say. Does anybody, has everybody, has anybody ever found out who they are? They say. This is what they say. Whoever they are. They say. These are key words. Found in King James Bible. We need a new translation. That's why. We got all those translations over there in the book. In the box. We need a new translation. Okay. Watch this. Here's the archaic words in the New King James Bible. Here's the archaic words in the New Revised Standard Version. Here's the archaic words in the New International Version. Here's the archaic words in the New American Standard Version. What's my point? My point is, if you need a new translation because the archaic words of the King James Bible, then why do you use the same archaic words in the New King James, New Revised Standard, New International Version, and the New American Standard. Just to give you an example of these. You see the hypocrisy. I don't mind you saying, okay, we need a new translation because I don't understand what the word shambles means. But, and I, and I, even though I'm against that, I don't have you, I don't have a problem you saying that. But don't turn around and be a hypocrite about it. Has anybody ever heard say, well, we need a new, uh, a new version of the New International Version because of all these archaic words. I just can't understand the New American, the, uh, new American Standard. They got all them archaic words. I can't understand it. I wish somebody would get rid of all them and get a new <coughs> translation. What about Shakespeare? Somebody needs to retranslate Shakespeare. Yeah. Okay. I can't understand all them these and thous and yonders and here the two fours and all of that. See, I just want to play by the same rules. I just want to play by the same rules. You criticize my Bible because it's got archaic words. Well, yours does too. Or when I say yours, I ain't talking about yours, but I mean. All right, let's look at this. Turn your Bible to 2 Chronicles. That's after 1 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 13, 13. Let's look at this. Look at an archaic word. Saint Chronicles thirteen thirteen. In the Old Testament, is everybody there? But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. Does everybody see that? An ambushment. Uh, when's the last time you used the word ambushment? All right. Somebody tell me what it means. Somebody got ambushed. <laughs> Miss Peggy has figured this thing out. Miss <laughs> Peggy does not need a new translation. Miss Peggy spent 21 years in <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn your turn Bible to Judges. Book of Judges. And that's over to your left. Judges 9. Judges 9, 53. Now, 
in the book of Judges, there were some men. <coughs> Verse 53 says, And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head, and all to break his skull. Notice how the word break is spelled. B-R-A-K-E. That's an archaic word. We don't spell it that way anymore uh, unless you're talking about your brakes on your car. Um, we spell it now, B-R-E-A-K, break, break a glass, this, that, and the other. Do we need a new translation <coughs> because of that? That's the way they said it uh, in the Bible, English. Uh, I'm going to give you these so you can write them down. I'm trying to catch up on some time. Deuteronomy 22.9. Deuteronomy 22.9. The word is used divers. Um, divers. D -I, sounds like um, ocean divers. Divers. In the Bible, if you read, as a matter of fact, let me read it for you. It's right here in my notes. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds. Somebody give me the definition of divers. Different seeds. Did we need a new translation for that? Um, that's what I'm talking about. Now, let's look at uh, <clears throat> something else, if we can. The Bible has a built-in dictionary. A built-in dictionary. You remember one of your memory verses is uh, Psalm 68 and 11. Anybody remember that memory verse? Psalm 68 and verse 11. Talking about uh, publishing. Publishing the Word of God. Great was the company that published it. Publish. Alright, take your Bible, turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Now, I'll tell you why, or one of the reasons God lays out a Bible like this, to cause you to study. I'll give you, for instance, another example here in just a second. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 19. Howbeit, Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath uh, or had a, uh, a compassion on thee. And verse number 20, And he departed and began to what? In Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him and all that did mark. Verse 19, Jesus told him to go home to thy friends and tell them. Verse 20 says, He departed and began to what? What's the word publish mean? The tell. How do we know that? Did we go to a Greek lexicon and figure it out? No. It's the definition is right in the Bible. Give you another one. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We're going from one end to the other. Yes. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 8. Most of you know the story. Adam and Eve sin. They're hiding. The Lord comes looking for them. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God doing what? Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Now, y'all ever heard a voice walk? <laughs> All right. We need a new translation because I don't understand this verse. Well, God will put that right there if you'll keep reading. <coughs> He'll give you the definition. Let me show you. Take and look at Genesis, or excuse me, Exodus, uh, Exodus 19, which is the next book over. 
Exodus 19. Hold your place. Genesis. And go to Exodus 19. And verse number 16. It came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings, thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the what of the what? Exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Look at verse 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, Alright, what's the definition of the word voice? The sound that it makes. Alright, heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Alright, y'all ready? Listen. Did y'all hear my voice walking? You heard a sound of me Walking. Do we need a new translation? No, you just need to keep reading. The definition is in there. Yeah. The voice of the trumpet. Now, look at, uh, let's see. I'll tell you what, look at, look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Now a lot of people are lazy and they don't like to study. They want everything spoon fed to them. So what we do with what we have now, we have Bibles now that have dumbed down society. Now you don't have to study. We'll all these whole box full of Bibles here. And we've dumbed down society so you don't have to study anymore. And uh, we'll figure it all out for you. And, uh, you know, you know how another way we've dumbed down society? We give all of our kids in math class calculators. Yeah. I, didn't, I, wouldn't ha I didn't have that privilege. We had to figure it out. But now they're having to go back and teach those kids multiplication tables for right. four. My son's having to learn multiplication tables in seventh grade now. Yeah. And because he, he didn't learn them in four. Right. We do the same thing with the Bible. Um, all right. Give me. Let me give you the, the where I was going. Luke chapter four and verse number eighteen. All right. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the what? The gospel, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover the sight of the blind, to set liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Okay. Take your Bible and turn, hold your place in Luke, two, or Luke 4. Go to Isaiah 6, 61. Isaiah 61. Father, forgive me for I know not what I say. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Verse 1. Everybody there? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach what? Luke 4 says he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Isaiah 61 says the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings. What's the definition of gospel? Good tidings. Good news. Same thing. Matter of fact, Isaiah 61, to preach good tidings unto the meek. You say, meek. 
what is the definition of meat? Luke 4, is it going to be to preach the gospel to the poor? Now, you don't need to go to the Greek. You don't need to go to the Hebrew. You need to go to the English Bible. The definition is built into the King James Bible. The def you will not find what I just showed you in any of those Bibles over there in that, that, that box. They took out the, def the, the, the dictionary, the built-in dictionary. They dummied it down. See, I don't want you to believe the King James Bible to be the Word of God because I told you it was. I don't want you to do that. I want you to believe it because you see it for yourself and you know it to be true. If you don't, then whatever you think is the Word of God, help yourself and read it. I just hope it's right. But I know this one's right. You say, how do you know? Because he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, my word shall not pass away. If his word hadn't passed away, I've got a copy. Amen. Well, there's a bunch. There's 400 different versions out there today. Which one is it? They ain't but two Bibles. Amen. It's either this one, or, or from Antioch, or it's from Egypt. They ain't 400. They ain't but two. <coughs> and I don't want anything to come from Egypt. I'm going to stick with where we first called Christians and where the church started, where it started sending out missionaries. That's Antioch, Syria. That's where my Bible came from, and that's what I'm going to stay with. Now, take your Bible and look one more before we move on to something else. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Now, if you go out, like some of you have, and tell people what I say. <laughs> Ah, oh, that brother Jeremy, he's one of them, one of them King James only cults. Let me ask you a question while you're finding Acts 2. That's what they say about brother Jeremy all the time. Of course, I don't really care. While you're finding Acts 2. Let's say I told you we were recording. I told you tonight. I am no longer a King James only man. I now believe that the New American Standard is the absolute final authority, is the Word of God. Let's just say all of us in here agree and we start publishing publicizing, we start writing tracts like I do about the King James and booklets and different things. The New American Standard, that's the only Bible. You know what the world will do? Yeah. They'll stop hating the King James and start hating the New American Standard. Yeah. You know why? Because they don't have a problem necessarily with the Bible. They have a problem with a final authority. And when you tell somebody, this is the final authority over my life, people automatically go, no. I graduated high school, I moved out, I'm on my own, I pay my own bills, my mom and daddy don't tell me what to do, and there ain't no Bible going to start telling me what to do. That's the society we live in. But if you believe the book, and you believe there is just one, like I do, then that Bible right there rules and controls your life. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, and verse number 21. Famous verse. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be what? Amen. Hold your place, go to Joel 2. It's real easy to remember. Joel 2, Acts 2. Now, Joel 2 is in the Old Testament. And he is toward the latter part. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. Chapter 2. Joel 
Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be what? What's the definition of the word saved? What does delivered mean? How did I know that? Just comparing verses with verses. You can find the definition. You won't do that in any other Bible. So, that's a little bit of the archaic words. That's a little bit of, um, hey, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's do one more. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Then we'll move on to something else. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Four times, a few, few loose ends here. Huh? This is oh, I enjoy this. Yeah. There should be several more in your notes that I'm not, just for time's sake, there's several more there uh, that you can look at. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2. For he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Notice the word succored. That word succored is a, an archaic word. We don't use that very much anymore, if, if at all. Hold your place. Look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. There's an archaic word. Now what God says is, yes, there's an archaic word in the Bible, but you don't need a new translation because I've got the answer in here for you if you'll want to study. And look, if you're lazy, then... Go get one of them other ones. Water it down. It's, it's, it's either Coke or Diet Coke. It's either 100% whole milk or 2% milk. Or skim milk. Yeah. I don't know how anybody drinks skim milk. Nothing but red top milk is allowed in my house. <laughs> if it's pink top, it is not even allowed in my house. <coughs> if you drink pink top milk, your wife runs your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't like blue top, pink top, red top, and green, whatever else they got. I don't even know. I just go for that one thing, red top. And when I got my Bible, I want it red top. There's some pink top over there. There's blue top over there. There's green top over there. Red top. I go, you don't tell somebody that to you. He is crazy. Isaiah 49. Verse number 8. Thus saith the Lord, An acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, I succored thee. Isaiah 49 says, I helped thee. Somebody tell me the definition of succor. How did I know that? I mean, we haven't even we haven't even brought out a Hebrew or a, a Greek lexicon. The Bible is the best dictionary about itself. It'll, 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 you run across a word you don't know. Hang on, keep reading. Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman neither not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Study, study. Study. <clears throat> Second Timothy two fifteen. I really don't have time for this, but 
2.15. Work hard so God can save you. Timothy 2.15 Be diligent. Second Timothy 2.15 This is in the Mormon Bible. Second Timothy They're harder to find in here too. 2.15 Do your utmost to present yourself approved unto God. Here's my point. King James Bible says, study. You will not find the word study. In that verse, and in the rest of them. That's right. Why? They don't want you to study. Amen. That Bible right there wants you to study. Amen. To show yourself proven to God. You say, how did you figure all of that? Study. You study. What are we doing in here tonight? Study. What's the devil? He don't want you to do. He don't want you to study. Yeah. All right. Now let's move on to. All right. Let's look at. Here's a loose end we need to tie before we before we uh, finish tonight, and that is found. I had several questions about the New King James. Version, the New King James Version. What about the New King James Version? Well, the preface of the New King James Version says the only thing we did was take out the these and the thous. It's all we did. <coughs> preface says, all we did, well, let me read the, the, the word. Here's the preface. I've got it wrote down. The preface of the New King James. A special feature of the New King James Version is its conformity to the thought of the flow of the 1611. The new edition, while much clearer, are so close to the traditional. We've removed the meticulous these, thou's, and ye's. Okay. By its own testimony, this is what it said. The new edition, King James, new, new King James, while much clearer and so close to the traditional. Okay. Much clearer. King James, here's your reference. Say if you may, we'll just hit that light one time again. King James uses seed. New King James, dis descendants, which is more clear. All these references. Dung. Y'all know what dung is? I don't know what that is. O F L A L. Now, which is clear. Now, their own testimony is a lie in the front of the New King James. This is supposed to be more clearer. You understand? Now, I'm not going to go over all these, but, all right, King James says man in Isaiah 13, 12, man. New King James changes that and says it mortal would be more clear than man. You see, now this is what happens, people. A preacher stands behind the pulpit and says this in the open. The New King James is clearer for you to understand. More clear for you to understand. So everybody in the audience runs out and go get some more without doing their homework. Without doing what? Amen. Study. Don't believe nothing nobody says. Go home and check it out. Don't believe nothing I say. Go home and check it out. 
This is it. I have studied. Make your own mind up. Uh, mouth. Instructions. Evil. Catastrophe. Screech owl. Night creature. Fat. <laughs> Verdant. I mean, that clears it up. <laughs> Displeased. King James says. Indignant. I mean, I know what indignant means, but I know what displeased means. And indignant is not clearer than displeased. You understand? Now, if you want to read a new King James, help yourself. Knock yourself out. Just don't believe the lie that they say. Oh, it's clearer because it's not clearer. And people get mad when I, you know, but anyway, I don't have anything, whatever. Um, now, there is, on the New King James, a little symbol on the front of that New King James. Did everybody see that? It's the same symbol on... The Book of Shadows, the occultic book of incantations and spells that witches use. Matter of fact, you'll see that same symbol on uh, the, the, the show. I don't even know if it's still on now. I never have watched it. Charm. Uh, the witches and they spell. They got vampires and they're sucking on everybody's neck and they turn into witches and they disappear and they, all this kind of old stuff that everybody's infatuated with. You know, vampires and whatever. Come on, people. And if you want to see that stuff, just hang around for the tribulation. All that stuff's yeah, gone. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm going to miss it. I hate to tell you, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to heaven. But I guarantee you, you just wait and see. Yep. You know, all that stuff you see on television? Oh, it's true. It's coming. It's coming to a city near you. They're going to invade from outer space and the underground, the underworld is going to open up and invade this whole world in the tribulation period. Yeah, stick around for that. Uh, here's a book, The Craft, The Witch's Book of Shadows, the same symbol. There's a group called Deicide, uh, the same symbol on the uh, New King James. Uh, if anybody wants to look at that at the break, you sure can. And all of that mysterious mark. It's an intertwined 666 is what it is. Um, you can look at that uh, in a little bit <coughs> if you'd like to. Now, write this verse down. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. This is what it says. And no marvel. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore is no great thing for if its ministers also be transformed in the ministers of righteousness. Satan said in Isaiah 14, he said, I will be like the Most High. <coughs> Don't you think it's odd that the symbol for the New King James... Is a 666 intertwined symbol. And 2 Corinthians 11 says, don't get upset because Satan himself can transform himself into the angel of light. Isaiah 14, 14 says, Satan says, I will be like the Most High. I will be like the real one. You don't have to like it. But you have to admit there is some truth to it. Now, let's look at the uh, New King James. I don't know. Um, and again, let me say this. We have 350, 400 people come to our church. 
and nobody stands at the door and checks anybody's mouth. <laughs> Bring whatever you want to help yourself. Nobody, we don't check Bibles and we don't have a trash can there. We check. No, no, can't bring that in here. That's been said. We've never done it. I don't even know what people bring in here. We have no clue. Bring what you want to. Bring whatever songbook you like. Help yourself. Sing, what, sing out of whatever songbook you want to. Do whatever you want to. But now we're going to use one that's in the thing in the seat there and when they say turn your hymn book you turn into whatever you want to <laughs> and if you're singing a different song well, you're, you're just going to sort of stand out a little bit <laughs> it comes preaching time everybody knows brother Jeremy I'm going to be using this one I teach Sunday school out of this one I teach Bible out of this one use whatever you want to help yourself don't bother me a bit Um, okay, now, you might want to turn that line on there, thank you sir, and uh, let's look at this, since we brought the subject up, the thou and ye, those are words in the King James Bible that we have that a lot of people don't like. Well, I don't understand this. I'm going to help you understand it real quick. If it starts with a T, it's singular. <coughs> you want to write that down. If it starts with a T, it's singular. That means second person, second person singular. If I say, I'm talking to the, I'm talking to one person, the, that. If it starts with a Y, it's plural. Ye, you with me? Yeah. I'm no longer talking to the, I'm talking to ye. Yes. Is everybody with me? I'm no longer talking to thou, I'm talking to ye. Now what we have done in our English language today, we've changed all of this, no matter if it's thee, thou, that you, of ye, we've changed everything to ye. I could say, if I was a, say you, or I'd say you. <coughs> If I say you, y'all don't know if I'm talking to you, or you, or you, you or y'all. <laughs> y'all. Humans. Start, still starts with a Y. It's plural. You know what the new king, the King James still uses thee, thou, ye. So you'll know if he's talking to thee or ye. King, the new King James has done what it said. It has removed all of these and just made it you. Now you don't know whether he's talking to you or you. Let me show you what, why, what the difference is. Take your Bible and turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. You say, what's the big deal? I'm fixing to show you the big deal. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verse number... Well, everybody still the story of Nicodemus, rule of the Jews, so on and so forth, came to Jesus by night. Trying to figure out, you know, Jesus says, you must be born again. And he's like, you know, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? Nicodemus is thinking physical. Jesus is trying to get him to think spiritual. Verse 3, Jesus answered said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Who's he talking to? He says thee. Because if it starts with a T, it's what? Singular. 
So if he says, very, very, I say unto thee, he's talking to Nicodemus. Except a man be born again and get up and save the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, how can a man be born the second time the mother's womb? I already said that. Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, who's he talking to? Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say, watch verse 7. Marvel not, I say unto thee, who's he talking to? Next word. Who's he talking to now? Ye must be born again. Watch. Marvel not. Nicodemus, listen to me. I'm talking to thee. Marvel not, I say, I'm talking to thee. The whole world must be born again. Ye is plural. That's everybody. If you just change that to the common you, marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. You could say, I don't have to be born again. He was talking to Nicodemus. <coughs> he wasn't talking to me. He was talking to Nicodemus. I don't have to be born again. <coughs> John 3, verse 7. Verse 7, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Is he talking to Nicodemus? Is he talking to you? Is he talking to you? Well, if you'll keep the these and the thous in there, you'll know who he's talking to. There's another one in Exodus. You'll look at it. Exodus chapter number 4. Uh, we'll look at that one. That's it. Exodus chapter 4. God's talking to Moses through the burning bush. You know the whole story. All right. Verse. Let me break into here. All right. Let me give you the rundown. Moses is making up excuses. Oh, I can't go see Pharaoh. I can't talk right. I stutter. I have a speech impediment. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Verse 14. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. I know he don't have a stuttering problem. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou, who's he talking to? Moses. Thou. How do we know thou is talking to Moses? Because it starts with a T. And thou shalt speak unto him, Aaron, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth. Whose mouth? Moses' mouth. And with his mouth. Who's he talking to? Aaron's mouth. And will teach you what? What everybody shall do. <coughs> See the difference? Moses, I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to be with Aaron's mouth. And I'm going to tell you what everybody must do. All through the Bible. You don't want to get rid of the these, thou's, and the ye's. If you do, you're going to mess up. Or you're just not going to know what, uh, you're just not going to know. Now, we're fixed to take a break. Hang on, i, I got to get this, uh, this done. Um... For me. New King James. 22 omissions of hell. 23 omissions of blood. 44 omissions of repent. 
50 omissions of heaven, 51 omissions of God, 66 omissions of Lord. The terms devil, damnation, Jehovah, and New Testament are completely omitted out of the New King James. What if that don't make you mad enough? Well, hang on, there's more. I may have to go to a commercial break. I just had that. Oh, you're going to love it when I buy it. We may have to go to a break and then I'll have to come back to it. Now, I'll tell you. Oh, oh. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 16, 18, in the King James. And I say unto thee, thou art, that thou art Peter. Notice the thou uh, talking to Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's King James. New King James. And I also say unto you, to see, the New King James is a whole lot clearer. Much clearer. And I also say to you that you, change thou to you, are Peter. That could mean everybody in here is named Peter. You are Peter. And on this rock I will build a church and the gates of... See how much clearer that is. That's giving me a cold chill how much clearer that is. Changes hell to Hades. Luke 16, 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, talking about the rich man, being in torments, and so on and so forth. New King James. And being in torments in... Now you know why preachers don't preach on hell no more. Amen. I mean, have you ever heard a preacher get up and preach on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, and go, this morning I'm going to preach on Hades. If you're going to get saved, you're going to hate it. If you preach out of a New King James Bible, you'll have to preach on it. You're going to hate it. Um, I'll tell you this one. It is break time, but hang on. I think it's 1 Corinthians. So y'all turn to 1 Corinthians 15 before we break here. I don't know to find it. Corinthians 15. Now this is one of the favorites that I read at the graveside at the, at the funeral, when I do a funeral. Uh, I, I can't quote it by looking at this. Um, Behold, I show you a mystery which shall not all sleep, which shall all be changed in the moment of an eye, the last trump. Corruptible shall be put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. They shall be brought past the saying, Death swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Is everybody with me about verse 55? Is that right? Mm -hmm. About verse 55? New King James. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Now wait, they changed hell to Hades. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55, they changed grave to Hades. What are they trying to teach you? There is no hell. There is no hell, and your saved loved ones, when you put them out in the grave, they're in Hades. You know that's not important. Why? They don't believe in that. You remember? Origin? Remember I had the two lines up here? They believe in that. <coughs> Where did this come from? It come from Egypt. Alright, let's take a break.